with Shake and Party people, that's right, it's the one day a year where I participate in shameless self-indulgence because literally only two people asked me to do a QA. and a And I'm realizing right now that that is a bold-faced lie because literally every video is about myself, so I've been participating in shameless self-indulgence for years now. Um, <laughs> so I retract that, back it on up, Jesus. I'll say this is the one day a year I do it for a long period of time in one video. But honestly, what am I gonna make videos on? I'm not an expert on anything. I can't be a booty guru. I don't know about makeups. I don't know about those shits. I do know about myself and my feelings and my struggles. So that's the content I could provide. And I'm always shocked that anyone is interested at all. But yeah, this video is going to be long. By no stretch of the imagination do I expect anyone to watch it in its entirety. But for that reason, I will go ahead and include timestamps down below so that you can feel free to jump around to the things that you want to know about. But also on that note, because I realize that there's going to be a low probability of people making it to the end of this video, I just want to express right now that I am so thankful for you. Again, that you care about me at all, that you've given me this platform to express myself and to have fun, and I do have a lot of fun doing this. I appreciate you, and I hope you're having a wonderful day. And also, if you want to subscribe and hit that notification bell, all that stuff really helps out the channel. And I'm gonna be participating in a loose rendition of Vlogmas, so I'm gonna be like slapping those uploads down randomly, and so if you want to be notified when those get slapped, that's what notifications are for. With all that explained, I got your queries queued up on my phone. I got a glass of water that needs to be refilled off to the side. And I plan on sitting here and and you right in the queue until I literally cannot anymore. I wanna like lose my voice. Okay, I guess we will start this off by answering your queries about my queerness. A lot of people wanna know my sexual orientation or they kind of like get vibes. And I totally get that. Believe me, I see it. I do realize that I exude a vibe. I don't know exactly what it is. Could be because I drive a Subaru. I don't know. <laughs> and I'm honored, honestly. But no, I think I'm pretty straight. And I say I think, oh my God, am I already losing my voice? We're one question deep. I say I think I'm pretty straight because I'm a very open person and I think that's why people mainly get those vibes from me. So if there ever was a situation where I was interested in another woman romantically, like I would have no problem exploring that, but it's just never happened. So I think that my orientation is straight. Also on that note, I'm not super interested in a lot of people, male or female. So I think like if I was interested in anybody, you know, I would kind of like act on that. I say I'm straight, but also it could be whatever. Does that make sense? Someone also asked how I felt about the LGBTQ plus community. I'm obviously cool with them. <laughs> Based on my last answer to that question. In general, I try to be cool with everybody, except for Todd. Fuck you, Todd. You know who you are. <laughs> Todd's just this guy I work with that wears like those puffy jackets um, and he thinks that I hate him and it was kind of a joke at first but now I kind of do. So I think that that's kind of funny. But I don't like actually hate Todd, I just prefer not to be next to him. Are you interested in dating right now or would you rather focus on other things? I would rather focus on other things. I think I used to like really feel like I needed to have someone in my life. I wanted to like spend my life with someone. For the most part, I still do, but like I'm at a really good place where I enjoy my own company. I have goals and things that I wanna achieve and like bringing someone else into that, like really letting someone else into that where like they were to the point of like living with me or something would be difficult. I like doing whatever I wanna do and not really consulting anyone else. Plus I either tend to like attract or seek out the people that are toxic or not stable or won't love me. <laughs> and then like my whole thing is like trying to make them love me. Like I could be the special one and like that obviously isn't healthy, so. Can you do more plus sized hauls? Sponsored of course, because get that money girl with four U's. First of all, Cassia, I hope that I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Your profile picture is absolutely gorgeous, queen. You are beautiful in every single way. Secondly, yes, I love doing fashion hauls. I love like being a little bit of an internet ham. And I just wanna thirdly thank you for such a seamless transition into the sponsor of today's video, which is Thread Up. Cause girl, did you see how I just like slippery like a little snake slid right in there with that 
transition. I've been using ThreadUp for over a year now and I wish that I knew about them sooner because I absolutely love them. ThreadUp is an online consignment and thrift store helping to keep your closet interesting, your wallet heavy, and the fashion sustainable. I have been working on developing a personal style which I've described as Miss Frizzle meets Steve Jobs and I love being able to score unique finds at a great deal. So let's get into the fashion show. First, we have this Universal Thread Fleece hoodie, which was originally $24 and I paid $13.99. It's like a comfy but socially acceptable to run errands in, and I paired it with these Marco Republic boots and Old Navy jeans. Next up, we're getting a little bit spicy. I have this All In Favor top that I got for $14.99. Estimated retail on this was $36, paired with these faux leather leggings from Torrid. And it makes me want to do vigilante shit, or go to the club the club. And finally my favorite outfit and the answer to your next question which is is there an item of clothing you want to wear but you're scared you won't pull off? And the answer to that is overalls. I have been obsessed with overalls. They are the moment and I have wanted some for a really long time but I've had a bit of trouble finding some plus size overalls that don't make me look with child. <laughs> So when I came across these short alls on Thread Up, I was like, I need them. So the overalls are actually torrid, and the turtleneck I have underneath is Daisy Fuentes. I made it weather appropriate by putting tights underneath. I'm not sure if it works, but I kind of feel like it's a whole mood. Honestly, like this is like main character energy. I don't know if you can tell by all the gyrating, but I am feeling myself. <laughs> Now, let me just tell you the best part because ThreadUp gave me a deal to pass along to you. So when you hit that link in my description box and use code Beatrice, you get an extra 30% off your order plus free shipping. So if you're interested in taking advantage of this, there has never been an easier time to refresh your winter wardrobe. Oh my God, I'm so freaking sweaty. With all your special clearances, I think you are an FBI agent, true or false? False. There was a lot of speculation about where I work. I don't work at NORAD. I don't work as an FBI agent or for the CIA. I don't work for Area 51. I believe that's in New Mexico. I am in Colorado. Funny story though, I did actually interview with the FBI while I was in college. It wasn't for a graphic design position. It was for like some kind of office clerical work. It was just a phone interview and I was so freaking nervous because it's the freaking FBI. It was the most painful interview that I've ever done. Plus I was trying to like kind of crack jokes. I do that when I'm nervous. <laughs> and uh, they were just like deadpan, just like no emotion, no laugh. They were giving me nothing. Keep giving me nothing FBI. I obviously did not get the job. I can't tell you where I work. I've literally signed NDAs. I can kind of give you the gist of what I do as a graphic designer where I work. I do want to tell you because it does sound really impressive when I say it, but it's actually Actually not. So I work in a basement of a building with absolutely like no windows for again security purposes. So as you can imagine it's not the most creative place for a graphic designer to be. I do everything that they need in the building for graphics that could be as simple as like name tags for offices, cubicles, to like farewells when people retire, to like our main focus which is events. People from all over the world come and we have to make posters to like welcome them um, you know, like it's a whole charade when people come out, multiple visits all year round. So we make original designs from that. I mean, it's for like people to like kind of schmooze the people coming and, you know, show off research and other stuff like that. My last project I was working on was like a birthday celebration for this specific place that I work. And that was stressful just because it's gonna be like widely distributed like throughout like all of the different locations. But yeah, honestly, I don't even know the full extent of like what goes on at where I work because everything's on a need to know basis and I just don't need to know. Like they barely give me enough information to make graphics for my job. So <laughs> like I know literally nothing. Some of the designs I've made are approved for public release. I'm not gonna share any of those because again, you'll know where I work, which obviously I could tell my friends and family where I work. It's not like this huge secret, like I can't even mention the name. It's just that they strongly discourage social media of any kind to the point where like they don't even want you having a Facebook, let alone like the shit that I do, which is blasting my entire life online. <laughs> Like it's strongly discouraged. When I think about it, they probably know and they probably like monitor my DMs and Instagram and stuff and make sure that I'm not like spilling the tea. I think that gave like quite a bit of information without like, you know, too much. I think I'm in my realm of safety, hopefully. 
Sticking with the theme of my job, a lot of you wanted to know if I would quit Redacted and start doing YouTube and content creation full-time. I was actually really considering going the full-time YouTuber route for quite a while now. I did have a conversation with my boss. My boss is like the best boss in the world. I'm not just saying that because she watches my videos, I'm saying it because it's true. I have never had a more understanding boss that wants to like work with you and you know, just, she really expressed that she wanted to like keep me. She was willing to work with me to try to figure out a solution to where I could do both. So the plan we came up with is really gonna start like at the new year, but I completely love the people that I work with. They make working there so fun. As like restrictive as that place is, there's a little group of people that are just like awesome. And I would just really miss the banter and like the social aspect because like that's, where I primarily get my whole social interaction is at work. But as far as the actual job goes, I can leave that behind in a heartbeat. I was there for probably a little bit under a year before I started YouTube. And I remember thinking then that like this was not my forever job. One of the main pulls is that it is a lot more money for a graphic designer because of the security clearance than I would get outside of that specific workplace because I probably make the same amount that a art director would make outside just as like entry-level graphic designer but yeah other than that the work is not creative I have to answer to people that aren't necessarily pleasant you know not my boss or like my co-workers just like I can't even say like who they are because that would give it away. Also, there's absolutely no room for advancement. The job I have today will be the job that I have in the next 10 years. There's there's nothing more as far as like elevation, as far as like promotions, there's obviously pay raises and stuff, but there will be nothing more than what I do now. It's not the most creative place to work. And I do think that I lost a lot of the skills that I had right out of college by working there. And like I'm saying all this and I realize that I'm extremely lucky to have gotten a job as a graphic designer at all because it's a really hard industry to kind of just like break into and especially to get paid as well as I do. You know, so I was completely prepared to just kind of like write it out or like start making a plan B and getting like another degree to do something else. But yeah, I never really saw myself staying there long term. Plus I've been given this like incredible opportunity that like not a lot of people get with the YouTube thing where I have complete creative control. I'm my own boss. I can do pretty much whatever I want. Like I literally have goosebumps when I'm talking about it because I can't believe that this is my life. Composure, composure. But with YouTube, I have this like incredible opportunity where I can literally make it whatever I want. And somehow people are watching. With YouTube, I don't know. Like there's really nothing guaranteed and that's exciting to me. I wanna like grow it and put my whole ass into it and see where it can take me and like what opportunities could come up. And like I said, with my day job, it's in this box and it is what it is and it won't ever change. I know what the future holds for that job if I stay in that position where I have like this other thing that's like this huge unknown and it's just so exciting and god I'm not crying because I'm sad or anything. I'm crying because like I'm just really passionate about it and it's cool that people care about what I have to say. We need to get off this topic because I spent most of my time growing up in school and stuff being very quiet and reserved and like not thinking that anybody would want to hear my opinion on anything or care about me at all. So uh so yeah, I'm just really thankful. Um, and this was not the question that I expected to cry on. <laughs> this is gonna be a long Q&A for a multitude of reasons. Okay, we're gonna take a sharp left and answer the question, does it smell like up dog? And I'll bite, I'm cheeky like that. What's up dog? Whoa! The next question is how is Chetty doing? And since he just plopped up here, here he is. His little peg leg kind of freaks me out. I don't know why, I just feel like it's so delicate. <laughs> when it's just like his normal leg, he's just normally thicker because he's furry. Um, they also shaved like a portion on his back right here and like all the way up his legs, but he's doing really good. Another animal question I got asked is how I came up with my animal's names. Chetty's real name is Panchetti. I don't know, I just heard Panchetta or something on the TV, like we had it on a cooking channel and I just started calling him Panchetti and it just kind of stuck and then it just got shortened to Chetty. Douglas was rehomed to me a year ago. His original name was Sydney, but that dog does not look like a Sydney to me. That dog looks like a Douglas. Does he not? Like with his little, like with his whole demeanor, that dog is a Douglas. Big girl problems, what stores do you shop at for ungranny-like undergarments? 
My last underwear purchase I bought from this store called Cup. I think it was like C-U-U-P. I don't know how I feel about their underwear because like my ass just eats their garments. You know what I mean? My ass is just like hungry and it like it devours that thin little, you know, they're not supposed to be a thong, but the way that they sit, it's just like, it's very up there. And the bras were really cute and I really like that they're unlined. I hate padding and bras because they tend to make my boobs look bigger and I don't want my boobs to look bigger. But what I really loved about their site, and I'm not sponsored or anything like that, like the marketing was really good to me as far as like realistic body standards because what who I assume goes on the site is women looking for underwear, right? So you see bodies like your own in the underwear Underwear. They're people with body hair. They're people with stretch mark. They're people with nipples. A lot of times on sites they'll edit out the nipple, the areola. It just seemed to value all of the same things that I do. I mean, <laughs> I value nipples. No, <laughs> no, no. But I mean like just a body not having to be sexual. It's just like, this is my body. These are the parts that I have. And that's like super important to me. Like coming from like an art standpoint, drawing naked people, like having done figure drawing classes and stuff. It just, I like that representation as opposed to like the super smoothed out, not a poor in sight kind of editing that a lot of the other places do. Like I do not shop at Victoria's Secret, like fuck that place. But yeah, that's where I got my last underwear haul from. A lot of times I'll just kind of go commando, especially with leggings, just because the best way to not have an underwear line is to not wear underwear. So that's a little bit of tea. Okay, have you ever gone through a friend breakup? Yes, I have gone through many friend breakups. <laughs> I do not have any friends. For the most part, they've been pretty drama free. Something about me is I lack like object permanence. So I'm very much out of sight, out of mind. So if a friend moves away or they're not in my general proximity, it's like I am absolutely terrible at texting, texting back, keeping up with people. Quite a few people don't really understand that. And like, I don't expect them to. I mean, like it does really come off as like a dick move, but but yeah, I've lost a lot of friendships that way. I feel like I constantly let people down and I don't like that feeling. So I think that makes me more hesitant to make friends. Um, so all of you who asked me if I would be your friend, yes, but you gotta know I'm an absolute shit friend. How do you overcome not seeing any results? With weight loss and stuff like that, I think if you make it not about the results, that's the easiest way. And that's something I've been trying to be like really mindful of is noticing how I feel after certain things. Cause after I exercise, I notice that I feel amazing. After I eat something healthy and balanced, I feel good. Um, I notice after I eat fast food, I typically feel bogged down and my insides feel greasy. How do you manage your finances? So from like a really young age, I've always been really interested in being financially independent and I really just wanted to be on top of my shit, like have a good credit score. Like I remember being concerned about my credit score when I was in middle school. <laughs> And I think that that stems from seeing my mom struggle with money a lot. Um, my dad was like addicted to gambling and all this stuff. He like bankrupted us. And then like he wouldn't pay child support a lot of times. So money was always... I definitely felt this tension with money growing up. Kind of just decided that I was going to be um, financially literate and I wanted to make sure that I was able to take care of everything and that I wouldn't have to worry like that. And that's like absolutely no shade to my mom or anything. Cause like she was doing the best that she could. How could she have known how my dad was? Cause he didn't get that way until like a little bit later. But um, so I was super focused on being in a good standing financially. When I got my house, that kind of changed a lot because I think like getting my house, moving out on my own kind of exacerbated the whole ADHD thing. Not that I just all of a sudden had it. It was like, it just kind of highlighted all of the areas in my life that I really struggle. And I was like really spiraling out of control because I had like all of these responsibilities that I'd never had before. Like I, up until that point, I'd lived with my mom and then now I had like all these bills, all these things to take care of, all these appointments to make. And I ended up being late on my house payment, not because I didn't have the money. It was because I literally forgot to pay it. Now, a lot of my things are on auto pay. I try to be as organized as possible. My mom also sends me text reminders. <laughs> Typically when I get paid, I put the main chunk that pays all my bills in my checking account. I'll put some in savings and then I invest. I'm pretty focused on investing because I like the idea of like my money making more money rather than sitting in a bank account where 
the bank is just investing it anyway. And by the way, this is totally not financial advice in the slightest, especially with investing. I don't really know what I'm doing. Someone also asked, but I seem to have lost it. I'll hopefully find it to pop it up on the screen. The question was asking if I paid off my student loan debt before I took on the debt of a mortgage. And the answer is yes, and that was the wrong move to make, which I didn't know and I thought was actually pretty interesting. So my credit score was pretty high for my age. And that's not a flex. Like I said, I was concerned about credit scores and shit when I was in middle school. So I was actively like working toward that. Like I got a credit card as soon as I turned 18 and I was working on building that credit. So I paid off my student debt thinking that it would improve my credit score even more. Like, look at me, I paid off this debt. I'm trustworthy to lend money to. It did the opposite. It dropped my credit score 20 points when I paid off my student loan. And I looked it up and it's because when I got rid of my student loan, that's a whole separate form of debt than like a credit card. So because I didn't have multiple forms of borrowed money, it knocked my credit score, which didn't make any sense to me. It kind of makes sense now because it's like a student loan is a lot different than a credit card. So it's actually better for like getting pre-approved and like your credit score and stuff to have like a student loan debt balance still in the works. Like you're still actively paying a student loan. I mean, it might not be better for you financially, but honestly, like when you're getting pre-approved, they don't care about that. And here's my little hack that raised my credit score quite a bit. So I got a credit card that had decent rewards. I'm currently using City Double Cash because you get 2% cash back, like 1% when you make the purchase, 1% when you pay it off. And it's like on everything across the board. Again, not sponsored, it's just what I use. What I started doing was putting absolutely every expense that I had normally on this card. I used it like a debit card. I used cash for nothing. Any way that I could use my credit card, I used it. But I would pay it off every single month. Like I would never carry a balance over to the next month because that's when credit cards start to get people in trouble because then you, you're paying more for the item than it is originally worth. Like you're paying interest. If you don't carry a balance onto the next month, you don't accrue that interest. So you can't just treat the credit card like free money. You have to have the money in the bank to cover it with your paycheck or whatever else. So I was very adamant on that. It helps sometimes to keep it in control if you have like a low credit limit on it. But I digress. So not only was I getting 2% cash back on literally everything, it shows that you're trustworthy, that you could be lent money and like that you're paying it back regularly and you're not skipping any payments. Like girl, do not skip payments. But if you're consistently making that payment, never missing a payment, never carrying a balance over, all you're doing is reaping the rewards and building a rapport with lenders, showing that you are able to borrow money and pay it back and you're trustworthy. And that credit score just goes up. So that's really all I have to say about like financial stuff. And again, it's not financial advice. I am definitely not qualified, but I thought that that was like a little bit of a smart thing that I did. Next question, do you have a PO box? I got a few questions asking me if I would get a PO box and I think it'd be really fun to get snail mail from you guys and I love getting letters and stuff like that. I don't know if I would feel guilty about receiving stuff and not being able to send it back. I already feel guilty about Instagram DMs, like you guys taking the time to like write to me and me not being able to get to everybody. And then that kind of just feeds into the whole like being a bad friend thing and not like texting people back or following up with people like I should. Are you counting calories or just eating healthy? What has been working for you? I'm currently not counting calories. Like I said, I'm not against it. I just haven't done it this time around and I'm still losing weight. So if I don't have to do it, I don't want to. My whole weight loss strategy this time is basically to kind of to bamboozle myself, to kind of like not focus so much on the process of weight loss like not get hung up on hitting a certain calorie goal or any macros or whatever, especially because I seem to be all or nothing with a lot of things. So I'm like really hardcore one way or really hardcore the other way. And I'm just trying to like maintain balance right now. And I mean, I think it's been working. I'd like to learn more about nutrition. Also getting better at cooking and learning to cook more has been helping, like really kind of romanticizing food in a different way. Barbecue or ranch on nuggets? Neither honey mustard all day. Is it scary living on your own? Sometimes when I think my shit's haunted, not gonna lie. Also, I'm a very anxious person. I stopped watching any kind of like true crime horror movies when I moved out because my paranoid ass could never. People also asked for an update on the haunting. There is no news. I haven't experienced anything else. I just heard that voice that one time and like a book fell on my shelf. It was all around the same time within a few weeks of Halloween and then it didn't happen anymore. So that's good. And I'm curious if next Halloween it will happen again. 
but I'll keep you posted on that. Other than that, everything's been okay. I'm hoping the voice was just like some weird way a voice traveled into my house, like from my neighbors, but I honestly, I know what I heard. My mom was trying to blame it on the furnace and stuff. And I was like, no, it was very clearly like a woman's voice saying lay down. It was very enunciated. There's really no mistaking it. Like I know what I heard. Which vegetable best describes your personality? I should say potato, but I'm gonna say maybe like a carrot. She's under the surface, she's low key, but like when you pull her out, she's orange and she's like a little bit sassy and emotionally unstable. How to deal with daddy issues, therapy. That's how I'm trying. Are you still doing hypnotherapy and would you recommend it? So I just did three sessions of hypnotherapy and I thought that I got what I needed from it. So I didn't continue with it further. So my whole thing and what I was trying to do with mental health for like the past year has been really trying to get my binge eating in control. With hypnotherapy, I think it let the real problem come to the surface. There's a lot of misconceptions about hypnotherapy and a lot of people think it's like really woo woo, but I feel like those people just don't know enough about it. It seemed like pretty normal therapy to me, like technique wise, I was never fully like out of it. I never like went into any kind of trance or anything like that. I was very aware the entire time. Mainly the whole thing was working on like visualization exercises, picturing what I want for my life and like the steps it would take to get there and going back in my memories and thinking of like times that I felt like shame or like I didn't feel confident in my body. Just kind of like going back and kind of getting to the root of the problem that way. I know that I personally got a lot of value from it, but I know that it might not be everybody's cup of tea. I know that even some of the exercises exercises kind of made me a little bit uncomfortable. It's kind of the same way that like improv would make you feel like uncomfortable. Like you're basically being very vulnerable with someone being like a little bit silly. And I thought like I would be very good at that because I'm very vulnerable and silly on the internet, but it was a challenge for me to kind of get past that stuff and really just try to like, I don't know, like say the first thing that came to my mind. So I hope that that answers your questions and it makes sense. How is therapy going and do you feel a difference? I would say it's going well and I do definitely feel a difference. It's good to have someone to talk to that's like just unbiased in your life. I could just say whatever and I get like honest feedback. It's good and I believe like therapy has been like the single best thing that I've ever done for myself. What is your fitness goal for next year? So honestly, I got that punching bag and I really kind of want to get into some form of like martial arts. I don't want to say too much because will I actually do it? Like how many times have I said something and then just like not, but I'm, I really like it and I would like to learn like proper technique and maybe even, I don't know, like this is like a little bit too extreme, but like actually fight in like a match or something. And mainly because I thought of something that I thought would be kind of a funny like song to come out to. Like, you know, in matches when the fighters come out, they play like some song and it's usually like really intense. I thought it would be really fun to play um, Why Can't We Be Friends? like as my come out fight song. But that's as far as I got. Like I know absolutely shit about fighting and I don't know if I could do it, but I just, I'll tell you one thing about myself. The levels that I would go to for a joke are pretty far. What are your thoughts on getting regular mani pedis? Fun fact about me, I have never got a manicure or a pedicure. It freaks me out when people touch my fingernails. So I don't think I ever will. <laughs> my ex-boyfriend, when he held my hand, he used to like kind of like squish his fingers over my fingernails and I would cringe. I did not want to hold his hand. And look how well that turned out. What do you do to feel sexy? I dance. I dance and I act a fool. And if that doesn't attract, can't do anything for you. I'm not the one for you. How do you lose weight with PCOS? I do everything right, but the weight won't go. So I get asked about PCOS quite a bit and like how I got diagnosed and all this stuff. Basically how I got diagnosed is my mom and my sister both had it. It was highly speculative that I had it as well. I got an internal ultrasound, which they stick something up your hoo-ha and they check out your ovs, your ovaries. On mine, it looked like a perfect little string of pearls all along, which were cysts. And she was like, your ovaries should be in a textbook as like perfect example of what PCOS looks like. And I was like, thanks. <laughs> but yeah, so that's how I got diagnosed. As far as symptoms of PCOS, PCOS, I don't really experience the trouble losing weight, I don't think, because usually if I'm in a caloric deficit and I'm like working out, I'll typically drop some weight. I do have the symptom of ovarian cysts, obviously, the hair thinning, the hair in unwanted places, cystic acne. She has a follow-up question. Do you take medication for PCOS? I don't. I used to take hormonal birth control to manage my symptoms, but now I am on a hormone
hormonal IUD. So I don't really like take a medication, but it's just like something that's within me that is supposed to be helping, but it doesn't really help on the cystic acne front that much, I've noticed. But my skin's doing a little bit better. Like she's starting to clear up a little bit and then watch like next video, I'll just be like, whoa. Then she has a third question. Do you struggle with body image issues? I did when I was younger, high school, even college, like I'd constantly wear a black jacket or like a hoodie to hide my body. I got away from that though. I don't feel ashamed of my body in the slightest anymore. Like, yes, I'm overweight, but I'm also very capable. Like I find myself being able to work out really well, to move around. I still have like my mobility and stuff like that. I would like it to continue to improve. If we lived in like a magical world where my body looked the exact same way that it does now, but I still like increased my fitness, I got stronger and I got like healthier, but like my physical appearance didn't change at all, that would be okay with me. I just think like I kind of reached a point where I'm just okay with how I look. And honestly, I realized that I have way more to offer than my physical appearance. And I would like everybody else to get to that point too, because it feels like a good place to be. Do slash did you ever play an instrument? I have not ever been really very musically inclined, but in middle school, the music teacher whipped out this trumpet and just started like, going ham on the trumpet, like just really tooting his own horn. You know what I mean? And I was like, I want to play trumpet. I played it for like a week and I learned to play good King Wenceslas. It was like, was that it? Oh my God, how do I remember that? Anyway, I hated the way it vibrates your lips when you had to like blow into it. And also spit really grosses me out, so oh. That didn't last long. Binged lately? If not, have you recognized your triggers and actively fought it? How? I actually have not binged in quite a while, like since I started hypnotherapy. Uh, there were several things going in the works at the same time. So I started hypnotherapy. Around that same time, I began the, on the topic of talking about my dad in talk therapy, like traditional talk therapy. And around the same time, I also got my ADHD diagnosis and I started taking meds for it. So since then, I have not binged at all. Okay, let's make this discernment right Right now. So binging is way different than overeating. I have over eight since then, like eight more than maybe like an appropriate portion size. But that to me is way different than what binging was to me. For me, binging was when I was emotionally distressed and I would order or get a plethora of food. Like it would be the amount of three or four meals plus like appetizers and desserts just sit there. And I would completely just gorge on food to the point where I felt physically ill. And I have not done that in like a very long time. I've definitely had moments where I've overate, you know, something's really good and I get more of it and maybe just like I'm a little bit more full, but it's definitely not binging. And as far as recognizing triggers, it's usually linked to emotional distress or stress, being overwhelmed, the feelings of being like out of control, how I actively fought it through therapy, like really learning to know myself and like what's kind of, kind of set me off. And just because I have something doesn't make me an expert on it, but I think that it's going to be a personal thing that you're going to find what works for you. The whole thing is to actively try to solve the problem and not be too hard on yourself if you slip because I don't expect that I'll never binge again. I think it's something that I'll deal with for the rest of my life and I've come to terms with that but I found ways to make it less frequent and to not be completely out of control like the same way that I was when I would have like episodes where I would do it consistently to the point where like I would gain a lot of weight very quickly. If you had to do this YouTube journey all over again, what would you do differently? This is kind of a cop-out answer, but I wouldn't change anything because A, can't, it's already been done, and B, everything I went through has led me to this point now and I feel like I'm in a pretty good place. I think I'm doing pretty good justice as far as like conveying everything as it happens, the way that it happens. You know, like if I gain weight one week, I share it. If I like lose it, I share it. There was a time when I kind of just didn't focus on the scale at all, but I wasn't stepping on the scale at all. I've been very candid about my mental health and I've kind of just like say things as they are and I try to like lead with honesty. And what's cool is I get messages every single time I upload of people feeling some kind of like kinship with me, feeling seen by my experience and all of this stuff. And I think that that's really awesome. Also, you guys helped me out tremendously. Like I would have never even guessed that I had ADHD. I didn't even know that inattentive type ADHD was a thing. Like I had a very ignorant scope on what that actually was. So without YouTube, I wouldn't have never got tested for it and I would not be doing as good as I am now. What is a skill you wish you had that you don't? What is stopping you from learning it? 
Uh, one thing that I really wish that I was good at talking like in front of people, being able to hold a conversation, being able to talk articulately without a bunch of ums and ahs. I mean, I don't know if you've noticed in my editing or not. <laughs> It's pretty obvious, but the amount of jump cuts that I have to do is uh, painful. It's very painful, probably to watch and definitely to edit. So I would love to just be able to just sit there and talk about things and be well-spoken. I assume that you hate being out in public and someone recognizes you. Ah, uh, that's actually not true. I don't mind being recognized. I've only had like good experiences. So if you ever see me, you could feel comfortable to say hi and I'll say hi back. I just, uh, I might be awkward and be ready for that awkward interaction. It's always a toss up. I never know how I'm gonna be. What does your ideal partner look like physically and mentally? Usually the physical attraction for me comes later after I've gotten to know someone. They're already like a friend first. Because if you look at my history, what are the similarities between these people physically? There's not any. Mentally I look for intelligence and sense of humor, obviously. I mean, like if there's no banter, what are we actually doing? Emotional intelligence would be nice. I don't know, like I want a whole range. I wanna be able to like have a deep ass conversation and then make a poop joke. Favorite most used cuss word? Uh, it's got a lot of versatility. If you could have one true answer to one question, what would it be? What does it mean? What does it mean? What does it mean? That would be a good one to know the answer of. Um, maybe I would stop having existential crises so often. Did you ever see your grocery store friend again? If you guys don't know, one time I went to Whole Foods and found this grocery store clerk that helped me find the figs. And we had just like a good little interaction and I was like, I want that person to be my friend. But no, I did not. I've gone back there twice since then. Every time I go, it's like a new set of employees. I don't know if they have like a high turnover rate in the Whole Foods or what. What's one thing you wish you knew about owning a home before buying? I already knew it. I, maybe I'm just like, I didn't want to believe it, but just how expensive absolutely everything was and just how many things would go wrong and then how many things there were to go wrong. Anything electrical, absolute nightmare. Contractors, you can't trust them to save your life. Oh my God, just... I don't even want to think about the contractor experience I had because it makes me sad every time. <laughs> it's awesome to have a place that's your own and like you're building equity in, but like also it sucks when things go wrong. Can you please wear the Patrick Star costume again, please? I can't. It literally disintegrated in the video that it was in. <laughs> It disintegrated before your eyes, girl. It was not well made and it fell apart. Whatever happened to the ink intro you tried to make? Okay, so I did this whole thing where I was like, I'm gonna rebrand my channel. This is me trying to do that. And I did like this like ink drop thing that looked kind of cool. And I didn't end up really like loving any of the footage that I got. I have this idea in my head that it would be cool to do a video making my personal brand. I thought that that might be kind of a cool video idea, but whether or not that would actually come to fruition or not, I don't know. Do you guys message you with love interest? Um, no. I got a weird DM about my feet that made me feel uncomfy, but I think that was more lust. Toe lust. Not trying to kink shame you or anything, but I was just not a willing participant. <laughs> My audience is mainly women. I have gotten hit on by women before. So there's that. Faith Christmas song. I don't really like most Christmas music. I actually find it pretty annoying, but there's this one song by the Ravenettes that people use as a Christmas song. And I think it's kind of like moody and it's kind of like indie and it's kind of good. Uh, what's it called? I'll pop it on the screen and maybe like play a little sample of it. All the lights are coming on. Favorite kid cuisine food? It would have to be the brownie with the sprinkles. I haven't had a kid's cuisine in a really long time. The food was honestly kind of crap, but like it was all about that brownie. Same with like the Hungry Man meals, like those frozen TV dinners. There was like a little tray of cranberries and that shit was dank. As a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? I wanted to be an animator and like work on cartoons or an artist. It was kind of funny because we went to Disney World when I was young and they had this thing, maybe it was at Epcot, I don't know. They had this like little workshop where you could learn to draw the Disney characters. Like it was just like a very basic Mickey Mouse head or a Goofy, Donald Duck. And this little workshop would go on every 30 minutes. I made my mom and my grandma sit there and go through four cycles. We did four. Like the first one we drew Goofy, the second one we drew Mickey, the third one Donald, and then it started over at Goofy and then we decided 
ready to go. But I was like super interested in this and like I drew it and I was like, they are gonna recognize that I am drawing these characters right and they are gonna give me a job animating for Disney. And they did not. The funny thing about it is like probably the teenagers who were teaching the little like demonstration thing probably thought the same thing. They're like, I really wanna be an animator they're probably gonna notice me and they're gonna pick me up. And there I was at like seven or eight or whatever, thinking that I was just gonna get this free pass, like not knowing anything about animation, just that is a really good goofy head. Welcome aboard. I still remember all of the steps to make the goofy head and also the Mickey. Donald was hard. The beak, that was, that was a hard one. I don't remember the steps for that one. How hard is it to stay vulnerable? This is actually a really good question. I don't find it very hard to stay vulnerable. I think that being vulnerable is way easier than trying to put on a front to be something that you're not. I totally see the hang up in being afraid of vulnerability because it's like if I express all of these things that are, I see as my weaknesses, then that gives people the ammo to just completely demolish me or whatever else. But it's totally not like that. I think that there's a lot of strength and vulnerability and being brave enough to show a vulnerable side of yourself encourages other people to do the same. And a lot of times it fosters connection and connection is something that I've had a hard time with. I and mean, I realized pretty early on that if I'm just very upfront about how I'm feeling, whether that's like insecure or maybe I have like doubts about something or just not very confident, like typically two things will happen happen. Either the other person expresses that same concern, like, yeah, I was feeling that same way too. I'm so glad that you said something. Or they offer some kind of guidance and they're willing to help you in some way, if they know a way to help you. You know what I mean? Like, for example, in school, like if I didn't know something, I'd be like, hey, I don't really get this. And then me and the other person would either suffer in solidarity or they would be willing to kind of like show me how to do something properly. How do you stay so humble? <laughs> She asked the girl who's been talking about herself for hours. My ruminating thoughts won't really let me have that big of a head because I know all of the embarrassing things that I have done, that I have ever done in my entire life. Anytime I start to feel like I'm the shit, I remember that time that I like literally shit my pants and it's just like knocked down real quick, so. Thank you, anxiety. What age did you lose your V card? Were you nervous as a plus size woman? Because I was. I was 18 or 19. I might have been 19. No, I was 18. Or was I 19? I was either 18 or 19. I don't know, time is an illusion. I was not nervous as a plus size woman because I was under the influence of alcohol illegally. And that's all I have to say about that. It wasn't good. It wasn't a good experience, sexually. Are you putting up a Christmas tree? Yes, but you're probably gonna be disappointed. How many days out of the week do you work out? I only work out like three to four days a week and they're usually like 30 to 40 minute workouts. How do you put your workout plans together? Do you follow a program or are they self-made? So I am actually very excited about what I have in the works for that. Um, they're not put together by me. They're put together by someone. It's a sponsorship that I have in the works and I'm trying it out for three months before I tell you about it. But so far I have been liking it a lot. So much so that I hope that they want to partner with me and I am like the poster child of this app. And like maybe, I don't know, like we work together long-term, I don't know. But so I'm gonna keep that to myself a little hush hush because I want them to see the value in me promoting it <laughs> before I uh, spill the beans on what it is. I don't know. I'm very excited about it. So I'm, I'm like chomping at the bit to be able to tell you. But that sponsorship is like set for February. So it's a ways away. <clears throat> Are you jealous I have tickets for Adele? Seth, you cheeky little minx, how did you get tickets for that? Yes, take me with you. Oh my God, I would cry. I would bawl at an Adele concert. You have no idea. Live music makes me feel a type of way. Like I get goosebumps and stuff and Adele live, I don't think I could handle it. I think I would be a complete mess. So you know what? Maybe I'm not jealous because I would be an embarrassment. Any tips or advice for someone wanting to start a weight loss YouTube channel? I got quite a few questions like this. I would say for like weight loss in particular, the best thing that you can do is just to be like upfront and honest about absolutely everything, like your ups and your downs. That's always a good thing. If you're talking about like from a YouTube like marketing algorithm standpoint, learn how to make good thumbnails. Some people swear that thumbnails are the most important part of the video over the content itself. So learn how to make those enticing thumbnails if that's your jam. 
girl, figure out your rising sign, please. We need your time of birth only. <laughs> this is funny to me for some reason. <laughs> I will figure it out. Hold on, let me just pause this so I save the bath. According to tarot.com, I am an Aquarius sun, a Capricorn moon, and a Libra rising. Whatever that means. I, I don't know. Tell me what it means. What does it mean? I'll, I won't do that joke anymore. I'm sorry. Some days I just want to lie down and do nothing. What do you do to snap out of it and start adulting again? I definitely allow myself to have those days where I just lay down and do nothing. Something that really kind of snaps me out of that is to kind of get inspired by something new. I'll be super down on myself, just feel like life is so pointless, and then I get super excited about something. Also, I'm a huge daydreamer, so I'll sit there and imagine like whole ass scenarios of me achieving this goal or whatever else. And I've kind of heard that like manifestation is just visualization. And that's kind of the first step to any goal is like sitting there and like thinking about it and really like going through the motions. And then that was again, solidified in hypnotherapy as well. So I would say while you're just laying there doing nothing, maybe just start thinking about what you would like to do. Like what kind of things ignite some kind of passion? What do you want your life to look like? Those kinds of things. And maybe you'll feel inspired and you'll get up and start working toward those things. Hottest fictional character for you. Um, I was like weirdly attracted to the Mandalorian, like before he took off his helmet. He's pretty cute, like without his helmet too. But I don't know, like he just had like a whole coat of honor and he's like taking care of Grogu and he was, uh, that was hot. Your diet looks so varied. So I'm curious, any foods that you hate? Mushrooms for me. I don't think I truly hate a lot of foods. I'm actually pretty fortunate about that because I know that a lot of people have aversions to food and I'm kind of like a foodie. So I love to try new things, try new flavors, but stuff with like a lot of oil makes me sick. Also Chinese food for some reason, even though it's freaking delicious, but I pay the price. Do you sometimes regret becoming YouTube famous? I don't really consider myself YouTube famous. YouTube's kind of like this great place where my content's very niche. I know that I've stumbled across other content creators that have like 8 million subscribers and I had never known they exist before. So that's kind of the beauty of YouTube. Like I can still go out of my house and not be recognized. I'm not on the same status level as like some other YouTubers. So I think that I have a good level where I'm still able to like do this and have an audience, but not be considered famous, like I'm very like low key. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't feel famous like in the slightest. Will you perhaps get another pet? I probably definitely will at some point. Right now, it's just too much to take care of. Douglas and Chetty trade off. One has an explosive diarrhea, then as soon as that clears up, then one gets a urinary blockage. It's a whole struggle. I don't know what's going on with my animals, but they need to wait till their pet insurance kicks in to start having any more emergencies because it's getting expensive. <laughs> I'm just kidding, obviously. I would go to the ends of the earth for mine animals. I would like to get more pets. My dream pet is a flock of sheep because cute. I don't know how to take care of livestock, so that would obviously be way down the line. A lot of research, a lot of time and effort. You know, it wouldn't be just like a rash decision. Something that would be a little bit more feasible for me would be a guinea pig sanctuary because I went to my local animal shelter and there's just like a bunch of guinea pigs like $5 a pop and I would love to have a swarm. I had guinea pigs when I was growing up and I absolutely loved them. I had this long haired Peruvian guinea pig named Mo. It was short for Mohawk and I would like sit there and give him baths and cut his hair because he had like long luxurious flowing hair. He was an enigma. I had another guinea pig named Joe at the same time. So Mo and Joe and he was a short haired guinea pig. He would get baths but he wouldn't get haircuts because he was short haired. Guinea pigs were one of like my hyper focus things. I was obsessed with them. I always drew them. I actually got in trouble in art class for only drawing guinea pigs and not doing any of the assigned work. And I don't regret it one bit, but yeah, super interested in guinea pigs. I would love to have them again. They're so cute and they have like their own like little personalities. Do you miss doing fitness challenges? Ever consider bringing them back? I do miss them. They're some of my favorite videos to film. I love seeing the progress. And that's why I really like the longer ones because you can really see from the first clip of me working out and doing the exercises from like the last clip, how much progress I made. They do take a tremendously long amount of time and um, memory for me to like collect all the clips for over a month and then edit it. And my computer has not been up to the task. I ordered a new one, it should be coming soon. I'm very excited about that and hopefully getting back into some challenge videos. Also something else is time. Like I really have to be committed and do it every single day, even the days that I don't feel like filming. When I get off work sometimes, I 
just don't want to film. It's bad, but I'm just like exhausted and I need to recharge and I can't really be entertaining. I guess. So I have nothing against like fitness challenges or anything like that. It's just been like time and not having the correct tools. What cookware do you use? You guys, you are obsessed with my pots and my pans. Let me just tell you, like that might be one of the biggest questions I get asked over and over again if I show myself cooking in a video. It's TJ Maxx. TJ Maxx is where I got my pans and my pots. I am a Maxinista. I don't know if they still have them. You had to buy them like individually. And that's why I have some gray ones and then some tan ones. But I was like, this is just such a cute aesthetic. And apparently you guys feel the same way. How did you end up working for a top secret company? I was applying for literally every graphic design job that would come up. And I saw this ad and it was just like a block of text, literally no formatting whatsoever, saying like the job description, but it was very vague. It's absolutely crazy the competition in the graphic design fields. I was applying to literally all these places and for like a lot of the places I didn't have enough experience so I wouldn't even get a call back. By some miracle, this place called me back. They wanted an interview and I was like, okay. Still not really knowing what the job was or anything. So I'm driving to this location. I don't really know where it is and it's like in the middle of nowhere. Just a field. And then I tried to go through the wrong gate and I met with an armed guard and I'm like, what the fuck? And they're like, no, you need to flip it around. It's on the other side. There's a visitor center. So I go and I have my interview in the visitor center. I meet my boss and my coworker. I have a really good interview. Like I'm on top of it. Like I'm myself. My personality was coming through. It was just like the stars aligned. And then they offered me the position and I had to wait a month for my security clearance to go through because I had never obviously gotten a security clearance. So that's how I ended up working for them. I answered a random ad with zero formatting. Have you ever considered opening up an Etsy shop or something similar? Your artwork is absolutely incredible. If the dinosaur scale or the octopus bullet journal were available for sale, you'd have folks lining up to buy them. I know I'd feel a lot better about stepping on my scale if I had a cute emotional support dinosaur on it. Just saying. That like honestly is so sweet. Willa Marie. I mean, I have considered opening a Etsy shop because people have asked me, but I always like chicken out. I have never actually sold any of my paintings or any kind of art I do. People have asked over the years, like in various art classes and stuff. I just typically gift them to them, but I'm also just kind of like super cheesed when people like the stuff that I do. I think that that's really nice. My whole life, like I was saying earlier, I wanted to be an artist. I wanted to do something creative. I never quite got to the confidence level where I felt people would want to buy my stuff. I think it's kind of that thing like that most artists go through. You don't value your work as high as you value others. So I've never actually seriously like looked into the logistics of setting up an Etsy shop. Did you end up finishing soundproofing Douglas's cage so he's not as anxious by the firearm practice near your place? Something I think about as an animal lover and wanting Douglas to have a safe place. The funny thing about that, as soon as I set up that whole apparatus in my bedroom, Douglas does not go in there. He goes in his cage because he knows that's where he's fed his night greenie and then he proceeds to sleep with me or go on his bed and he'll need to be swaddled like a little baby. But for the most part, we haven't had a problem with that for a very long time. That kennel just sits in my room. It acts like a big shelf that Douglas does not use. Quite a lot of inquiries about merch and if I plan on making any. I thought of a funny merch idea the other day, roll the bongos, not blunts. But then I also don't wanna shame anybody for smoking because I don't care about that. I live in Colorado. I personally don't partake, but I'm not judging. I just thought it was kind of funny. I don't think that would be a good merch idea for my first launch if I ever decide to launch merch. Also, I would need to look into like merch companies and make sure everything is consistent because when I did the officially unofficial 5K and I launched those t-shirts for charity, I was ordering a lot of my own shirts like at different periods of time because I was like, <laughs> I made these, you know, it was like very exciting for me. Plus 100% of the profits went to charity. I didn't pocket a single dime of that. Like I never even saw the money other than like the total of how much the shirts made for World Central Kitchen, which is why I was okay with there being a little bit of inconsistency. For example, on one of the shirts that I ordered, like after one wash, the design started peeling off and I was like, what is this? But on another shirt, it was completely fine. And it was because they were using different t-shirts just the correct colors and that's kind of the problem with doing print on demand and like literally no one complained that bought a shirt I just noticed that myself and I just know that if I was releasing merch I would want to make sure that it's 
something that wouldn't just disintegrate in one wash. Like I was kind of disappointed with that. I don't know, it's just like everything else. Like it's something where I almost don't even wanna say anything at all because I don't know when I'll actually do it and I don't wanna like let you guys down. It just takes me a long time to do anything. I'm sorry. On that sentiment of the officially unofficial 5K stuff, a lot of you are asking if we do an another event for charity, if we do another 5K. Yes, I really want to do something like that. I really wanna make it bigger than how thrown together and new I was when I did the first one. I did the best I could, but I'm really hoping that I'm able to kind of reach out and make it something that looks a little bit more official and maybe make it an actual 5K that like I show up and you guys show up and we have like a virtual element of it. Maybe like I'm picturing me like live streaming, me running the 5K. So even if you're doing it virtually, you could be like running it with me. That would be honestly kind of embarrassing, but like, I don't know. I just like have been thinking about this and I really wanna make it something that's good. I really was super proud about how much money we were able to raise for World Central Kitchen and I'd love to do another philanthropy related thing. I can't stop thinking of like these huge things that I want to do which makes it like a little bit more enticing to quit my day job and just focus on like all these big things. What was life like before YouTube for you? Has YouTube changed your life that much? Big fan since the beginning. Love you B. Thank you. I appreciate you. Life was way different before YouTube. I mean like literally every aspect of my life changed. I probably wouldn't have found out that I have ADHD. I probably wouldn't have this house because having a whole second job gave me a boost financially for sure. YouTube made me much more brave to kind of be more outgoing in my real life. And I think that my personal relationships have gotten better. For example, at work, I feel like since my coworkers found my channel and saw me being goofy on the internet and being myself really, like this is how I am once you like know me and once I feel comfortable around you. And it sped up that process at work so I'm able to be like this at my workplace and make those connections with people. I mean like even like little things, like I know that I'm technically the influencer but it works both ways because in the comments you guys suggest things and I take your advice on a lot of things a lot of the time so it's like who's influencing who I don't know but that's my whole take on that it's changed my life 100% no questions but I wanted to let you know that you do not have to have a weight loss channel just have a B channel you are funny creative and have the vulnerability to show your real and messy life just be you don't worry about having a weight loss channel first of all thank you that's all really nice things to say and it makes me happy to know that you guys aren't solely interested in my weight loss journey. That is a common theme in my channel because that's like my biggest thing that I'm working on and that is the whole reason I started this channel to begin with. I do really like YouTube. I like exploring my interests online and sharing that with people because I don't know, it's just cool to be able to and like get feedback and find people with similar interests or express like some random thought that I have that I feel kind of isolated with or whatever and then have other people feel the same way. So I just feel like a real sense of community and I don't know, I've really been enjoying vlogging lately so I don't plan on stopping if I feel like I'm at the pinnacle of my fitness journey or whatever. A million plans of content that I want to make whether there's an audience for it I don't know but I love making videos I love editing I love the whole process and I love that this is a way to be able to share. When you regained the weight you had lost last year what do you think the reason you weren't able to get back on the horse quicker? I'm so impressed that you have and didn't let the regain take over but I know it had to sting to work to lose 40 pounds and then to gain it again. I've repeated the cycle of losing a significant amount of weight and then gaining it back. It's just like this thing that repeats in my life. And normally when I fall off and I gain the weight back, it's like whatever. And then I just kind of wait for the next inkling of inspiration or the new thing to try. Then I get back on it and then the cycle repeats. With this time, it was a little bit different because like YouTube, I had an audience watching me gain this weight back. So there was like a little bit of pressure that way and like negative comments and stuff, which is fine. I chose to do it publicly it comes with the territory but I was trying over and over again to get back on the horse because I was like okay we can't let it slip too far back we gotta get on it gotta get on it and that's when I kind of realized it's just gonna be this cyclical thing unless I fix the underlying problem of my mental health ultimately that makes me kind of fall off and then go through like this depressive episode and not be able to get back on and also like you know the whole binge eating thing like I probably had to address that first before I was gonna see any 
type of real progress that would be sustainable. And I kind of put the notion of weight loss on the back burner and I wasn't super focused on that. It was like mainly focused on my mental health. Still wanting those things, but not overwhelming myself because therapy's hard. <laughs> like therapy's very difficult. You bring up a lot of things. You have to like really deal with them instead of pushing them down or ignoring them. And I wanted to just kind of focus on that as opposed to doing that plus trying to lose the weight and putting pressure on myself that way. But like I've mentioned several times in this video, I feel like I'm at a place where I'm good now mentally. It's just like very relaxed and making as unnoticeable as a change in my daily life as possible so it just happens to me as opposed to being super hyper focused on thinking about weight loss constantly which is how I was before and so I'm kind of enjoying this laid-back approach and it seems to be going well I've almost lost 20 pounds plus I feel like I'm killing it in the workouts and I feel strong and I feel like more confident than I've ever been and so cool where do you think you get your sense of humor from it's always the best and speaks to my soul thank you trauma <laughs> I don't know <laughs> I honestly think it's a coping mechanism. Just because humor is the single best thing in the world to diffuse a situation or quickly change the mood in a room. For example, when my mom got breast cancer, it was me, my sister, and my mom in my sister's room. And my mom was like, they called and they have the results and I have breast cancer. And of course you know that that news is not good and it was very emotional and like my sister, <laughs> my sister started bawling right away. My mom was tearing up. I kind of started to tear up, which you would probably think considering how often I cry on camera here that I would as well be bawling, but my role is to be the okay one. Like that's always been my thing. Like I've always been okay. So it was a pretty intense moment emotionally. It was just heavy. And then my mom asked me to hand her a tissue and I responded with, okay, but only because you have cancer. And both my sister and my mom just started busting out laughing. Like we just started laughing just because, I don't know, it's like an insensitive thing to say. I would never do that to someone I didn't know, obviously, but it completely just like diffused the situation and it kind of just made it less heavy because in that moment, there's nothing we could do about it. You know, we could either cry about it or we could laugh about me only getting my mom a tissue because she has cancer, you know? And having a sense of humor about stuff just makes dealing with all the hard stuff that literally everybody has to go through, it makes it bearable. I'm curious about your surname. Is it Italian? Do you identify as Italian? It is Italian. Uh, do I identify as Italian? I don't really know what I am. When I asked my mom, she like just starts lifting off 50 different shades of white. And then as far as my dad's side, I'm not really 100% sure there either. I don't talk to my dad anymore, but I recall him calling me, I don't know if this is a derogatory word by the way, because my dad was like literally the most offensive person in the world, like so offensive that it wasn't offensive because he was equally offensive to literally everybody. So I guess that's a quality. Anyway, he would call me and my sister Crexers, which I tried to look up to, you know, make sure that it wasn't derogatory or anything. And I think that just means you're like a mix of something. So again, if it's like the Harry Potter equivalent of calling someone a mudblood, please do not take offense. I tried to look it up. I don't know if it's offensive. I don't even know if it's a real word or if that man just made shit up. That seems to be his forte. I think I'm a mix of a lot of different things. It would be interesting to kind of get one of those saliva tests done, but I also feel a type of way about giving my DNA to one of those databases. Can you draw Chetty and Doug as people? Y'all are really trying to get me in trouble because you know Chetty has a mustache that's reminiscent of probably one of the most evil people that have ever lived, right? Anyway, so here's what I came up with. I imagine Douglas would be elementary school aged, his belly always out, the weird kid that every time he looked in his direction, he'd be staring, unblinking, and he'd probably breathe down the back of your neck on the bus. And Chetty would be a bit older, probably late 20s, definitely a hipster. He wouldn't bathe that often, so he'd be a bit smelly, like B.O. and thrift store. He'd wear a fedora and a funky vest, and he'd drink Starbucks, ironically. Gonna put on your little sweater. Gonna get a pup cup. Gonna put on your little sweater. Oh, so cute. Oh, you're the warmest boy in the ball. The warmest boy in the ball. Rego beats. Rego. Oh my God, the line is long as usual. Let's get some questions queued up to keep this Q and A rolling. Do you want to be my friend? 
yes, but also I'm a bad friend, so just fair warning. Two, would you ever want to do a meetup with your fans? Yes, if I ever grow the cojones. How is the work YouTube balance treating you? Like a baby treats a diaper. Do you enjoy weight training? I do. I really like the feeling of getting stronger and I feel, I think, the most accomplished after a weight training sesh. If you could have a bathtub full of anything, seriously, literally anything, what would it be and would you get in it? I would have a bathtub full of my enemy's tears and I would bathe in it all day. I'm just kidding. You mentioned one time that you don't want to have kids. I haven't decided yet, but I'm leaning towards not having any. Can you talk about why you've come to that decision? Okay, first of all, like the whole idea of like being pregnant terrifies me. The skin stretching, the growing something alive inside you, like it's horrific. I know it's supposed to be like this beautiful process in life, but it just terrifies me. I've never had the urge to have a baby. I've never had baby fever. I've never experienced that. Um, I see babies and I'm like, oh, cute, but I don't want the responsibility. I don't want to have that level of stress and worry for the rest of my life. Like my mom is still worried about me and my sister. I'm almost 30. I've never wanted to have kids. I think if I ever did, I would adopt or do like foster care or something. I would never have my own. Um, I don't even know if I could because of my PCOS. Cause like when I got my PCOS diagnosis, the doctor seemed like really concerned. She was like, um, and if fertility ever is an issue, we will cross that road. There are meds, you don't have to worry about anything. And I was like, I am not worried about getting pregnant. You do not have to worry about that. What's the dinosaur about? I'm assuming you mean like the blue dinosaur I put as an emoji? I don't know, it's just a good emoji. Dinosaurs are cool. Someone asked me, what is my go-to drink at Starbucks? It changes. I've been on that nitro cold brew bandwagon for a while and I'm about to order now, so I will tell you what that drink is once we pull up to the, the thingy. Hi, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? I'm doing good, thanks for asking. What can I get started for you? Can I please get an Ariana Grande sized um, green tea latte? Okay. With two pumps of classic syrup and soy milk? Gotcha. And was that hot today? Yes, please. And uh, a pup cup, please. Oh my god! <laughs> Hello, baby! You made your little baby face! <laughs> I know it smells really good, huh? Sorry, five minutes. <laughs> You're good. Thank you. Hi, how are Thank you so much. You oh too. Oh my gosh, he has a sweater on! Yeah, he gets cold. Oh, bye, <laughs> bye, have a good one. Someone else had the question when will Doug be getting his next pup cup? The answer is right now. There you go, Douglas. So I got a lot of questions on my diagnosis with ADHD, like how I got it, how my meds are going, also ASD, because I mentioned in my diagnosis video that the psychologist also suspected that I had autism spectrum disorder, except for in that video, I called it Asperger's and I was not aware that it was an offensive term um, or its history. So I really apologize about that. And I thank you guys, everyone who like sent me a gentle reminder, like saying like, hey, that term's not really used anymore. I'm really glad that you guys recognize that if I do or say something super offensive, that it's not meant in malice and you guys just kind of like nudge me in the right direction so that I could get better without being canceled. <laughs> and in the psychologist's defense, he did call it another term before he called it Asperger's. He must have said autism spectrum disorder, but it was like a long appointment, you guys. It was like constant talking. And so when he said that, I was already kind of zoning out. So I must have looked confused or something because then he was like, it was referred to as Asperger's. And of course my ass remembered that because it's immature and I've literally pictured hamburger buns on butt cheeks. Asperger's, you know what I mean? So again, I apologize. For the ADHD thing, it was like, this assessment was like hours with a psychologist. He basically asked me absolutely everything from childhood till now, everything that I could recall. He was asking me like sensory things, like if I had problems with like how clothes felt as a child, just how I was in school and stuff. And I was telling him like, I'm very high achieving. I don't know, it's like a whole slurry. It's like the ASD and the ADHD make it a whole cluster jam. And it's like a lot of seemingly contradictory things from what I gathered. I relate to a lot that goes along with autism spectrum disorder, but I don't really feel that I need a, an official diagnosis. But anyway, I digress. After that first session, that assessment, I was officially diagnosed with ADHD. He prescribed me Concerta 
for the ADHD. And he also, because I mentioned I have problems sleeping, he wanted to prescribe me a sleep aid as well. And I was like, you know what? I just want to take the Concerta. It's the literally the only medication I'll be on. I was very apprehensive to take medication in the first place because I had tried an antidepressant in the past and I don't remember the name of it. Like at that point, like my depression was so bad. I was just kind of going through life and then I was like absolutely desperate. So that's why I tried an antidepressant. That was like such a terrible experience for me. I'm not knocking medication by any means. I just had like a really bad experience. So it kind of scared me. Basically this antidepressant just made me not feel anything. I was like numb and I was, uh, I don't, I should probably put it like a little bit of a trigger warning. I'm not, I'm going to try to gently phrase this, but like attempts were made. I did not care about anything. And that was a really scary feeling because I would rather feel the absolute misery that I was in before deciding to start the medication than nothing. Um, nothingness is a scary feeling. So I started just the Concerta at a super low dose and I didn't really notice a whole lot of difference in like the first dose. He then eventually like a month later after taking that, he increased the dosage just a little bit. When I first started taking it, I felt like a little bit more of like, I guess like a dopamine hit. Like it wasn't something super noticeable. I was just more like happy. And I noticed as time went on, my anxiety was less and I still would have like some focus issues. So I was seeing progress. It just was really mild. And then I heard that voice in like the, it was around Halloween time I heard a voice and that's what like people are talking about when they're asking about like the haunting of my house and people in the comments were like it could possibly be your ADHD medication but I don't really think that that was the reason for the voice I mean I'd never heard it again I was still unconcerned for quite a while because I decided to wait till my next appointment anyway so I got off the Concerta now I'm currently on Adderall I feel fine on this one I don't see what people are talking about when they're like, oh, you take it and then like you can do your homework all in one night. You're just like super focused. And I think that's the people who don't have ADHD and they use it. Or maybe they like take too much of it. I'm not sure, but I that is not my experience at all. Notice like less anxiety again, um, just more general focus and not as much, I call it like spiraling. Like I would go around the house from one room to the next, just like going somewhere, stopping, getting lost in my thoughts, then going to the next room, stopping, getting lost in my thoughts, and then just, it was exhausting. And I don't do that as much anymore. I still do it a little bit, but it's not to the same degree. And also people had a lot of questions about because I'm very high achieving, got straight A's in school. But yeah, I would rely on the need to people please, the fear of rejection. Also, I need to procrastinate up into a deadline and then have that like adrenaline rush of like, oh my God, am I going to make it? Am I going to get an F and you know, all that stuff to get stuff done. I would wait till the last second to start 10 page papers. I would study the day before tests. I would completely zone out in lectures and teach myself like the night before a test, whatever was on the test. I don't feel like I actually learned that much. I just feel like I've been blessed with a pretty decent memory. Um, and so the achievement is there. Oh, also, um, I was reading on the ADHD medication that it could potentially have a side effect of loss in appetite. I haven't really noticed that that much. I did, I think, with the Concerta at first. It was just like a little bit, but I don't know. I think that the ADHD medication helps me with like binging, but I think primarily why I binged was because like I would spiral out of control and like that would be like my comfort, my self-soothing. You know what I mean? I would be so stressed. And then now with the ADHD medication where I'm able to get like more done and not wait till the last second and actually be able to focus and noticing that my anxiety went down quite a bit, like it has been absolutely life-changing. And so I think that like it's helped with the binge eating too. Also, I have heard that binge eating is a symptom of ADHD. Don't quote me on that. I can't really remember. I'm so glad I wasn't afraid to take the medication because it's been extremely beneficial in my life. And I can't, like, I was, I was mad for a while that no one realized that I was struggling so much. But then I was really thinking about it and I was like, I never let people know either. Like, I was like, always like, I'm fine. I'm the okay one. Everything's fine. When it was like literally that cartoon of that dog that's like surrounded in a house of flames. That was my whole life. My mom was like, I never knew. Especially because I was the one that was like always getting like high marks and like achieving stuff. And people really don't know unless you say something. So yeah, that's, <laughs> that's that whole spiel. Douglas, you're being such a good baby. Look at this baby. He's just snoozing in a sweater. Sharon wants to know, hey, do you like your name? Thinking of naming my daughter B. 
I do like my name, actually. One thing, though, is like if you tell people your name is B, they don't really understand that. Like at restaurants, if I get put on a waiting list and I say B, they're like, huh. Or if they read it, they think like Bia. But I actually do like my name. Um, also, I looked into songs with my name just because, I don't know, there was a song called Aubrey by this band called Bread, and I was like, oh, that's cool if your name was Aubrey. So I looked into songs that were named Beatrice and I found one and it's a rap song and it's kind of my jam. In the song he's like I'm running players like I'm Beatrice but he's talking about that um college Beatrice that like would do like those two a day workouts and I think a couple of their players died because they like were running so much. So that's a little bit bad but I pretend it's about me but it's actually like a bop. I was subscribed to your old channel and always thought you'd have a million subscribers. I loved your old skits. They always made me laugh no matter how bad things were going on in my life. Would you ever re-upload them or any of your old weight loss content? Um, <laughs> I don't have them anymore. If you guys don't know, I had an old channel two years, two to three years before I started this channel. It was called Happy Cashew. I got that from like a random name generator online and I was like embarrassing. Like I would upload skits. I would be buying wigs constantly. Like it was great. I always kind of thought that I should have been a theater kid, but I was too shy because I always loved that kind of stuff, like dressing up and playing a character, even though like I'm bad at acting and stuff like that. But I had a lot of fun. I was like doing some really cringy stuff. And if I had any of that stuff, I would share some of it or like do a reaction video or something, but I don't have it anymore. When I broke up with my ex I completely wiped that because I didn't want him and his new girlfriend to make fun of me. Spiritual what do you believe in? Would you ever have a tarot reading or rune casting spread done? I think that I'm spiritual. <laughs> I actually went and got a psychic reading done when I was trying to figure out if I wanted to quit my day job. She kept wanting to talk about my dad and I was just like I don't want to talk about him. I already do that in therapy. Tell me if I should quit my job or not. I was really just looking for someone else to make the decision for me. So yeah I went and I got cards pulled for that. But um, I don't really know what a rune casting is. Hi, sorry, my battery just died. Also, my plant, my pants just split. The chub rub strikes again. And the lighting is bad. So on that note, I think I answered a lot of personal questions and I hope that it's enough. I definitely didn't get to them all. Um, oh yeah, Sean did ask a question. We all know Sean. Sean's like the mascot for this channel, besides Douglas and his sweater. <laughs> he wanted to know my favorite animal and what sound it would make. He's trying to like bait me into making a bear sound because we had this conversation about like that I don't know what bears sound like. So here's my bear sound and it sounds kind of like a pig or like that weird kid that would like growl in middle school. Everyone had one. As far as my favorite animal, I don't really think I have one. I like a lot of different animals. Um, I really do like guinea pigs and they make a sound like wee 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 which is really cute. He also asked what animal I'd want to be for a whole day. And I think the obvious answer is cat because what does Chetty do all day? That mofo just sleeps. He just putters around from one room to the next, finding a sunspot. He would just be like, and have no obligations. And I feel like that would be the life because here I am hiding behind a pillow for good lighting on YouTube. Chetty doesn't know what YouTube is. Anyways, I think that that's long enough. I'm gonna have to edit this beast and um, I'm getting worried that I'm not gonna make it for Monday. <laughs> uh, Cause, oh my God. And then I have to add timestamps. Oh no. Um, plus I have to start filming more Vlogmas. And I spent a ridiculously long time trying to make a TikTok this morning. But yeah, I just wanted to thank you guys for all of your questions. Seriously, like there were so many questions. I definitely didn't get to them all. I hope I at least touched on most of them or like most of the most common ones. And I hope you're having an amazing day. And remember, if you want to spice up your winter wardrobe, you can use the link in my description. Use code Beatrice at checkout for thread up and get 30% off your order plus free shipping. And I'll see you tomorrow for Vlogmas. Bye! Bye.